car making. It's long been based on heavy iron, but today that ore is increasingly different. It's software now, wireless, displays. But what odds do car makers stand in a game that wilts even legendary electronics companies? I'm Brian Cooley, and in this episode of CNET Conversations, we take you to Volkswagen's Electronics Research Lab in Silicon Valley. And there, the heat is on lab director Peter Uhl and his team to come up with innovations that they think could make their company the number one automaker by 2018. Peter, research here involves what? What kind of technology are you putting in cars at a place like this? Um, yeah, we at the Electronics Research Lab, we deal with infotainment systems, driver assistance systems, with the human machine interface, driver distraction is a big uh, mm -hmm. issue. Um, we also do a lot of software development work for our products. So basically, you get to work on all the stuff that is really hot button in cars these days. <laughs> yeah, we, it's definitely true. Software is one of the big topics at the moment, especially in the inf infotainment uh, area. Mm -hmm. We have to deal with lots of intelligent software components in the car. And the Silicon Valley is definitely a place where innovations in that field happen. This is attractive. Peter, what have you done to me? <laughs> You put a, an eye tracker on your on your head. So this, this is, is watching my eye. Is, yeah, this is what you're watching your eye, and okay. this camera is facing forward to see where you're looking to. What's this going to so measure? This measures visual distraction. Oh, this is okay. one of the things we can measure with this simulator. Okay. You can measure everything else too, but visual distraction is one of the key topics okay. while driving to make driving safe. And this thing's going to figure out where I looked when I shouldn't have been looking too often Correct. in that direction. Correct. All right, so, so put this guy in drive and start driving. Start driving. Okay. But I didn't pick up my smartphone at any point which a lot of folks would do. Yeah. How do you get people to put this down and look here? How do you make this head unit tastier than the phone that I'm more familiar with because I use it all the time? This is kind of the big portion. We have to make that, uh, the infotainment system, in a way that it's uh, attractive and that you would like to use it mm -hmm. uh, visually. And on the other side, we have to make it in a way that it's safe while driving. All right, Peter, now here's a heat map that comes out of that simulator. Yeah. What am I looking at? Yeah, actually, you can see the red and yellow and green areas. The more red you see, the more often you look at this area. Okay. So you can see the view is mainly out of this the is good. picture. This is good. There's a couple of dedicated areas, focus areas on the infotainment system. Yeah, fair amount of time was spent here, here, and yeah. here, over and over. Yeah. Most car makers agree now they can't roll their own on every experience. Consumers want familiar services they already use out of the car to follow them into the car. So we're zooming in here, and I'm in the Google Earth, and then when I get beyond the 50-yard resolution that I uh, see here, 30 yard. 30 yard, and then look at that. Now that's not, that's not something I've seen before. That's street view. And if I go to this pad, I can scroll around my position just like I can if I'm sitting at a PC browser. Tech companies like Google have update cycles measured in months, at most. Car makers, in years. How do those two industries ever mesh their gears? The main goal is to, to have a modular system, because that's what the smartphone companies do. They do not release a completely new developed smartphone every half mm. year, so they all have their modules and they combine them new, package them new together. Right. They have the same system below, the, the same operating system or the same hardware, and it's only packaged new, added some new functionality to that. Here's a small example of how automakers move at a pace more like electronics, using technologies like this 3D printer to rapid prototype ideas today, not next week. Well, let me show you something. Now, that 3D printer that we have here in the ERL made this whole. This isn't like that $1,000 3D printer you've got at home. That's real cool, but this machine was made ready to go. This wasn't assembled later. Same goes for this chain. It came out this way. That's amazing.
What we've seen here today is progressive and new, but it's no longer niche or odd. This is the car making game today, the technology you've seen here. It's the last bastion in our digital lives where there's a wall left to be broken down so our behaviors can flow across all the places where we live, in car and out.